Hello everyone. Good evening. I don't know when I will have the chance to upload this video, but it's evening now on a Sunday uh, eve Sunday night. <sighs> I wanted to take this opportunity to discuss my various pagan practices and beliefs. I get a lot of Satanist accusations everywhere I go, so I thought I'd officially put it out there on social media, exactly what I am and what I do and why I do everything. Basically, I was raised as a Christian. Fundamentalist, very bigoted Christian family, and needless to say, I drew away from that when I was in my early teens. I kept fighting against it and fighting against it. There was a time in my early 20s when I literally was abused in the Christian light to such an extent that I became afraid of the Christian God. And I felt that everything I did was a sin and I kept asking for forgiveness and feeling that I couldn't do things good enough, that every little detail had to be perfect or else I was in danger of going to hell. Well, as many of you can guess, um, that didn't last very long. I finally came to the point where it drove me to the brink of sanity, and I told myself I cannot go on like this. I cannot forever be in such bondage. I have to escape somehow. And I made the prayer, not particularly to the Christian God, not particularly to any God, just to whoever was out there, that if I can be free of this prison, I wanted to be able to make the choice to actually have the freedom to choose between whether or not I went with it, or I rebelled and went the exact opposite way and Within the next few days, my family disowned me, and they kicked me out of the house. And at first, it was a horrible blow to me. It was intense pain. Some of the greatest pain that I've ever known. But speaking to a friend of mine, they told me it was probably the best thing that had ever happened to me in my life. And... Now that I think about it, now that I can stand back and look at it with a fresh, clear perspective, I, I agree. I believe that it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I was able to choose between what I believed, what I fold, and what I practiced, what I did with my hair, what I did with how I dressed. And now I am me. I can safely say that I am myself. And at that time, when I was in such bitter torment, I did not know who myself was. I had no identity of my own. I had the identity of the sheep who follow. I do not think for themselves. I was accused of being a sorcerer that to my family was an evil thing and since being disowned I have come to find out that there were pagan priests and priestesses in my family line on both my father's side and my mother's side and that I have inherited all of their gifts, all of their powers, everything. The line of priesthood was handed down to me. And until I was disowned, I would never have known that. I never had the clue that anything like that was in my family line, or that I had any peculiarities. I, to myself, all I was was just a fellow 
that was miserable. And they didn't really have much of a life other than taking care of my family and donating all of my time, all of my energy, all of my resources to them. And they kept taking and taking and taking. And for some reason, nothing I ever did was good enough for them. No matter how much work I put into their little craft or farm, I suppose you Americans would say it. I wasn't ever good enough. I never could do enough for them to be pleased with. I was always in trouble. And there were times they would literally shun me to the point where they would not give me food to eat, but still expected me to carry on my daily routine of work. Now I'm free of that and I have no regrets for making the choice and walking away. And though it caused me to be disowned, it was the first open door my life ever had. I was a elderly couple that I was employed by at the time and they heard of it and they offered me a place to stay in a small bright orange motorhome on their property that we always called the pumpkin. So literally, I was the wizard who lived in a pumpkin. And actually I miss those days very much because well, I do not miss the man of the family having his stroke and leaving for three months to a hospital in the nearby city. I do miss the times that I was alone there and I could go for hour long walks anywhere on their 80 plus acres property and commune with nature. Sometimes their dogs would follow me, sometimes their cats would follow me. Especially a particular one, Solid Black, named, I named her Asmodia. And she was everywhere with me. She followed me on my walks. She was always a part of the rituals I would carry out. And I felt she was my familiar. And then about half a year later, totally different property. They had another black cat. I think its name was Loopy. But I always called her Asmodia because she followed me everywhere and it was, this, it was as if it was the same cat. As if like this spirit from this cat was transplanted into this cat. Because it acted the same. It had the same mannerisms, the same little quirks of when you'd go to pet her, where she'd move her head. Everything. It was the same. And since that, I've never again found the same cat, but I am still looking. Anytime I see a black cat, I always look. I always try to call it Asmodia, as if it would follow or respond to the name, but it never does. And at the 80 plus acres, property that I enjoyed so much. I was able to take walks, six mile walks through the library. And got a lot of books about the occult. Having been accused of being a sorcerer, I wanted to find out why. Why did my sister accuse me of such a thing? What is there anything I did that suggested it, that made it look like it? And if so, is it a bad thing? Is really being a sorcerer an evil thing? What makes witchcraft evil and what makes it good? What makes the old hag of a witch as compared with the old venerable wizard? These questions I had and I needed answers and I I examined many, many books on the occult, and one particular book called, I, I think it was called The Goodly Spell Book, published by, I think it was Coven Oldenwan. I think it was, yes, 
Lady Passion and Juve. It went in depth on what makes us witches. Yes, even a man can be a witch. This I found out, this... Even a man can be a witch. It's your alignment to the Earth's energy. It's not that you make a pact with the devil and sell your soul in return for these miraculous powers. No, it's a power that each and every one of us can influence. It's what runs through us and gives us life. It's what causes the green things on the earth to grow or the stones in the earth to turn to diamonds. It's what causes the stones to grow in the first place. It's what causes the wind to move and the water to ripple. It's the spirit of life. It's what it's what caused all things to grow from the beginning. Whether you believe the earth was created by an individual or a group of individuals, or that it was created through a big bang. Whatever your viewpoint is, energy is the cause. The effect is us. And once I discovered that, I could go for my walks in nature and feel it. I could feel it flowing through me like a charge pushing up and out, renewing my strength revitalizing all the damaged pieces in my mind. It's what caused me to finally be able to sleep at night. It's what caused me to be able to let go of my family. And say, yes, I know. I was not good enough for them, but I'm good enough for myself. It's what caused me to finally let go of them and say, no, even if they came to me and asked me to come back, I will not go back. Because obviously they do not need me. Or at least they thought they did not need me. And even if they found out to the contrary, they made their decision, let me on with my own life. And in my walks in nature, I felt the other's presence. Whether you are a monotheist and believe in one God, or a polytheist like me and you believe in many, I felt the presence. And in the woods I connected with Kernos, the great horned God, basically the father and protector of all life. My, my dear wife would say Odin. And I do not deny the existence of Odin either. I am, after all, a Celto-Germanic wizard. I believe in both the Celtic and the Germanic gods and goddesses. I believe in Hecate, also known as Freya, Isis, Astarte, Demeter, Diana. The mother of life. I believe in the Morrigan for whom I am named. The goddess who controls fate on the battlefield. The goddess of darkness and vengeance. I do believe in vengeance. If a man stands in your way, Ask him to move. If he stands in your way still, ask him again. And ask him the third time. After that, you move him. And this may be a very harsh way of dealing with things, but 
only real goodness is expansion of your own self, broadening your mind, accepting other things, learning, gaining strength, carrying on in your life, moving forward. And those things that stand in your way must be removed. Because if you do not go on your way, you will not complete your purpose. And your reason for living will be null and void. And again, as I've said many times before, I may be very wrong. But this is what I believe to be true, and this is what I follow and walk through in my daily life. I try to break down barriers. The way I dress is a harbinger of the same thing. The long, wizard-like robes that I wear, sometimes I wear the pointed hat, sometimes I wear my flat cap. It depends on my mood, but whatever I do, I am always an eye-opener because people see me and I catch their attention. And people start asking each other, why would somebody dress like that to come into this store? Or did you see that? Did you see the way he was dressed? Why would he dress like that in this restaurant? And it doesn't really matter. Because I've caught their attention, I've caught their mindset. They start thinking, why? Is that there is, has to be a reason? Does he just dress like that? Uh, there must be a Dungeons and Dragons game going on somewhere. Or there's a medieval festival somewhere going on nearby, and he's dressed up for the occasion. But then they see me again the next week, dressed the same way or similar. I may be in my long green robes, or my black ones. Or I may not be wearing the robes, but rather wearing this long trench coat jacket. People see that, and the makeup I sometimes wear, and they are like, I've seen him before. He's dressed weird again. Why? And pretty soon you know, there are other people usually younger people, who see that and they think, that's cool, I should dress like that. And they order something online, or those like me make it themselves. And they start wearing the same thing. And then they decide, this one doesn't work for me. I need something a little differently, like, I'll change the sleeves and I'll change the hood, or I'll change the length a little bit, or I'll make a different color. And piece by piece, I'm getting people to understand their individuality and grow into their own selves and break down societal walls of traditions. It's a tradition. Young people wear denim jeans, tennis shoes, t-shirts. Black people have different styles. White people have different styles. Mexicans have different styles. And sometimes they crisscross and mix match and do whatever they want. And to an extent, that's fine. If that's what they are in themselves. But if that's what they feel they have to do because it's tradition, it's style. You have to be clean shaven. You're in this type of walk. You have to have a beard because you're this kind of person. You have to fit in here. This and that, this and that. Everything is set. I've never in my life followed trends. I've always stuck out. Even if I tried to fit in, I always stuck out. And I finally realized that I am unique. I am weird. And I don't care if I'm weird. I can be weird if I want to. I'm happy being weird. And I'm happy to try to make everyone else weird if they want to follow. And if they don't want to follow and they want to go do something else, like 
dye their hair purple, or pink, or green, or blue. Or if they want to dye it rainbow color, or if they want to wear mixed match clothes like goth boots with a medieval tunic and a fedora hat and one half of a mustache. If that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do, and they should be able to do it. And they should be able to feel free to do it. Instead of walking around the world like I do, and being stared at. Everyone is unique. You may find two people from the same walk of life, who have the same almost everything, but ask them detailed questions about their interests, you'll find that one likes to watch NCIS, and the other one likes to watch Bleach, the anime. Two totally different things from people very similar to each other. And while I guess this is just an example, it is actually a very realistic example. My adopted sister is a professional bookkeeper, but she's an anime addict, the same as I am. She's much like me as a witch, but she blends in with them all because that's just the way she is. However, you look deep enough at her, there's a little thing here and there that will catch her attention and signify her witchiness. If witchiness is such a word. All I'm trying to say is I'm accepting of very many different people. Some people who have been in mental institutions, some people who are as sane as anyone else, as sane as any normal person. But still have peculiarities. That's why I do what I do. I want people to accept me, but I give them the choice to reject it. I want to let people know that Strangeness doesn't necessarily mean evil. I wear black. It's a very reverent color to me. It doesn't signify that I'm in league with the devil. All I am is just a wizard. Not an evil wizard, not a black wizard. I may be dark, but I'm not black. Darkness does not signify evil, it signifies mystery and archaic power. It signifies things that are not understood by everyone who follow the subject. It signifies that covered in shadow, what cannot be easily seen. people to understand that. I want people to understand paganism a little better than they do now. People write books on it because the knowledge is pretty much obscure, almost obsolete. In fact, there are very many sects of paganism that are obsolete, and that is a sad thing to me. Because it is the foundation of every civilization in the world. Even the founding fathers of the United States were secretly involved in a cult that celebrated Columbia, the goddess. That is why Washington, D.C. is called the District of Columbia. There is even to this day a hidden temple. Its exact locations I do not know. I looking into that. But the same. There are temples all over the world. Even the great Stonehenge of my own native England 
was once a temple, and while almost nothing is known of the people who erected it, they are part of my ancestry, and I want to learn about it. If there's anything to be known, I should be very, very glad to be contacted. On Facebook, I am Morrigan Rowlings. And you can message me or something. I know there's the Callanish Stones of Scotland. I have a bit of Scottish in me. I don't know if I have the ancestry from those people or not, but that would be interesting to learn about as well. As well, I am a Celto Germanic priest. Celtic. Traditions, bloodlines, names, gods, goddesses. Those things interest me. I'm always learning. In paganism, you never really finish learning about yourself or your choice of life. Whether you chose to go Celtic, Germanic, Viking, Shaman, whatever you choose to do, you will never finish learning. The same as if you decide to learn to play the violin, you never actually finish learning to play it. You will forever get a little better, and a little better, and a little better, and a little more fluent with the way your fingers glide across the strings or the way you handle your bow, you're always going to improve. As a wizard, you will always improve in your magic. The way you flow energy through your wand, the way you cast your rune stones, or the way you gaze into something to scry into someone's past, you will always become more adequate to the job. That is what I strive for. That is what I hope anyone who wants to follow this path, that is what I hope they will be able to do. The discouraging part is always thinking, but it is so hard, how do I open myself up to be able to use magic? It feels like such an impossibility because Modern man has learned to shut down their third eye. Shut down that part of their brain. They can't use it anymore. Unless it is open. Meditation can help. Fortunately for myself, I had someone who literally opened it. And from that moment, I looked around and I saw, I saw my wife, Melissa, and I saw the aura around her that was so strong, a visible energy field. And yes, I need to practice that. I will always need to practice that. But it was one of the steps forward that I made. The first being, of course, disowned and studying on it to find out what this whole thing was about. It's completion to me. It is perfection. It is my own spirit connecting one on one with the gods. There are times when I am in a place surrounded by trees and I literally feel fresh, cool breath. I have felt his presence. I have felt him lay his hand on my shoulder, him speak the words. That is what I thrive on. That is what gives me the strength to continue this. 
I hope I will, I hope I will be able to encourage a great many people through my work, whether it's through these videos or through my wand making or through anybody out in the open that sees me walk around in my robes. They think that guy is weird, but he must have a reason for doing it. I wonder what his reason is. Maybe I'll go walk up to him and ask. Or perhaps they'll go home and they'll think about it. Think about it, and they'll think about it some more. And they'll tell some of their friends, and their friends may laugh at it. May make a couple of random jokes about it. Or their friends might go home and think about it. I think there's a purpose he has. And who knows, they might see me on social media. And they might subscribe to my work. Or they might watch my videos, something, and they'll gain encouragement for their daily life, whether it's to become a wizard or a witch, or to just go about their normal daily life with a sense of purpose to their existence. Basically, that is the message I have for tonight. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to me. I want to end up with a great number of followers, but the number is up to the gods. Hail and farewell. Have a blessed evening. Adieu.